So there's a boa constrictor on this log on the top right. We're in Costa Rica, by the way. A lot of birds and small mammals come to these water dishes in Dan and Winnie's front yard, and this boa showed up and lay in that same spot for a few days. Dan and Winnie were interested to see how the other animals behaved around the snake. The animals could definitely see it, and they would signal that they could see it to each other and even to the snake. We didn't see the boa for a few days, but then this morning I noticed it was back. I started filming, hoping to see interesting behavior from these other animals. Did you catch that? A dove came to land on the log and the boa caught it, practically in midair. Let's look at it again. The dove goes to land on the log and right here the snake strikes it and curls it up. And again. The boa is moving so fast. That other dove doesn't seem to react much. Maybe it's shock or maybe it knows that it's safe because the boa is going to be swallowing for a while. Now the boa is squeezing the dove to death, earning its name boa constrictor. Some recent research has shown that boa constriction doesn't rely on squeezing air from the lungs, but by putting so much pressure on the chest that blood can't flow back to the heart, shutting down the animal's circulation. This kills the animal much faster than suffocation would. So at this point, it's probably thinking about how to swallow the dove. Snakes tend to swallow from the head so that the limbs fold into the body and go down easier. I don't know why he's sniffing around the tail. Maybe now he's looking for the head to start swallowing. Here the snake decides that the bird is dead and it can drop it to get a better angle. Apparently this behavior isn't observed very much in arboreal snakes, because if they're any higher in a tree and they drop their prey, they'll probably just lose it. This is where the swallowing begins. Mammals are pretty much the only animals that have evolved the ability to chew, so for everything else you either have to tear off small enough pieces to swallow, or swallow it whole like a snake. You can see the shoulder joint of the wing is already tough. This bird does not look easy to swallow whole, but it's actually not a particularly huge meal for this snake. And what's more, all those feathers are indigestible, so the snake's not getting anything out of all that extra bulk it's swallowing. Now it's using its whole body like a limb to grip the bird and swallow it. But swallowing is not easy without hands. <laughs> I thought it was pretty morbid that these two doves were just watching their friend be devoured. Now the bow is getting a better grip. These are the same two doves. Again, the community's doves don't seem as shocked as you might imagine about what's going on. No alarm calls, no harassing the snake. But what could they do? For a second here, you can see the dove-sized lump about a foot into the snake. This is one of two big yawns we're going to see. These are common in most snakes after they swallow. Swallowing something really huge can leave a snake vulnerable for a while, so sometimes they'll go somewhere safe right after a meal. But this one seems happy to return to exactly the same spot. Snakes reuse successful ambush spots, so it's probably hoping to catch something else. Here's another big yawn. Scientists think that these are a way to reset the bones and soft tissue in a snake's face that get stretched and dislodged after these dramatic acts of swallowing. After it got settled, I left a time lapse running for five or so minutes. The snake stayed incredibly still. It's able to just sit there and hardly move a muscle.